Hello everyone. With COVID restrictions almost completely gone, all respiratory viruses are free to circulate just like before the pandemic. And this includes influenza. The flu will kill probably hundreds of thousands of people just like every year and millions more will end up hospitalized. But there is a lot we can do about that. And no, I'm not talking about the yearly flu shot. I believe we all know about that. I'm talking about something else that is terribly underutilized and this is early treatment of influenza with antivirals. So why isn't this common knowledge and why don't more doctors use antivirals in the treatment of influenza? Well, I think that the reason number one would be the fear of the unknown. Many doctors are very familiar with antibiotics, so we have many patients with influenza who get treated with antibiotics for no reason whatsoever, but not many doctors are well acquainted with antivirals, and they are afraid of possible drug interactions, side effects, and they are not very convinced that these antivirals are effective in the first place. The second reason would be, it can be very hard to tell the difference between influenza and other influenza-like illnesses, especially now in the era of COVID, right? So, Many doctors are not sure when to decide to pull the trigger and prescribe antivirals. Not to mention that our diagnostic capabilities for influenza are still limited, rapid tests are not that accurate, and PCR is not widely available, it's expensive and it's time consuming. But even all of that should not be a problem in practice, as you will see in a couple of minutes. So, what do you need to know to start treating your patients with antivirals right now? Number one, start as early as possible. In most guidelines, in most research articles, you will find that you should start treatment preferably within 48 hours after the onset of symptoms. And the logic is simple. We want to kill the virus before it has the chance to spread and wreak havoc. So if it's influenza season and your patient's symptoms are consistent with influenza, start treatment right away. Do not wait for the confirmation because time is of the essence here. What if it turns out that it wasn't influenza after all? Don't worry about that. The drugs simply will not help your patient because they were designed specifically to target influenza and not other viruses, but they will not do any harm either. So be liberal in your use of antivirals for influenza. Of course, the one viral infection that will cause most diagnostic difficulties today is COVID-19 because the symptoms are virtually identical. But if there is one good thing about COVID is that rapid and accurate diagnostic tests are widely available. So in most settings, you will be able to test your patient for COVID within minutes or maybe a couple of hours. So if your patient's COVID test is negative, this is another element that will support your decision to start treatment for influenza. Okay, number two, whom do you treat? Well, this is easy. You can treat anyone, but there are certain groups you should focus on regardless of whether they are vaccinated or not. This is an important thing to point out. So, these would be high-risk groups for influenza-related complications. So, people older than 65, people with chronic conditions, heart disease, lung disease, liver disease, kidney disease, immunocompromised people, people with BMI over 40, and let's not forget pregnant women. You will always treat them, even if they present after these initial 48 hours of symptoms, you will still initiate treatment with antivirals because these people need all the help they can get. We need to do all we can to prevent serious complications. Now, what about young and healthy people with no serious risk factors? Well, if they present very early in the course of illness, so within these 48 hours, you can treat them. Of course, they are not a high priority group, but early treatment will shorten the duration of symptoms. But if they present after these 48 hours, there is not much sense in starting antivirals then. This will not affect the duration of symptoms anymore and when it comes to preventing complications, the risk of complications in these groups is low to begin with and this late treatment will not significantly affect the risk. So if they present early, treat them, but if they present late, there is not much sense in starting antivirals then. Okay, question number three. What kind of antiviral should you choose? Well, in most of the US and Europe, oseltamivir is the first choice, is the most widely available and the most convenient drug. It comes in oral form and the usual dose for adults is 75 milligrams twice a day for five days for uncomplicated influenza. 
it's safe, there are very few side effects. The most commonly reported side effect is nausea. About 10% of patients report nausea, but even that is not a huge problem. Drug interactions are rare. It's relatively inexpensive because the patents have already expired. You don't have to worry about inducing viral resistance. Resistance rates are still very low. All in all, in most settings, oseltamivir will be your first choice. But how effective are these antivirals really? Well, studies have shown that they shorten the duration of symptoms on average by about 24 hours. Now, I know that at first when you look at it, this doesn't sound like much, but when you take into account that the average duration of symptoms in influenza is about three to four days, you realize it's not bad. Not to mention that you get very similar results for antibiotics in the treatment of self-limited mild bacterial infections like strep throat, for example. And from my personal experience, whenever I started antivirals early, so let's say on the first day of symptoms, the results were always quite impressive. Typically, there would be dramatic improvement already within 24 hours. But the main question here is, do antivirals prevent complications? And you will literally find hundreds of studies on this topic. And they vary widely in terms of size, quality, study design. So there are RCTs, there are observational studies, the population, the endpoints that they looked at. There are also several huge meta-analyses that try to reconcile these differences. And when you sum it all up, there is a good amount of evidence showing that antivirals really do prevent complications in high-risk groups. Patients who were treated with antivirals were about 40 to 50% less likely to develop a complication that would require antibiotics or other modalities of treatment. This also translates into lower hospitalization rates and even lower mortality. So seek out the patients who are at high risk of influenza-related complications and treat them as soon as possible. I emphasize again, timing is key. But what if your patient with influenza already has a complication? First and foremost, pneumonia. How do you know that this is influenza pneumonia? How do you tell it apart from other types of pneumonia? Well, you can learn all about that in my next video. And if you work with acutely ill patients, febrile patients, in influenza season, you need to make quick decisions. Who is severely ill, who needs treatment right away, and who has a self-limited non-significant infection? My free online course will help you do just that. Recognize serious infections as soon as possible. It will help you a lot in influenza season. Thank you for watching. Good luck out there and take care.